Listen, if you're tired of making the same old, same old every week, I got something for you. Today, we're making shepherd pie. Let's get it. Okay, so look, I'm gonna let the camera go ahead and pan over these ingredients right here. Don't forget, the full ingredient list is now printable on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com. That's W-I-T-A-B.com, right? Now listen, you guys can see, look, this is what I did. I made mashed potatoes, right? Peeled, cut, seasoned, added a little bit of liquid to it. You know what I mean? But if you guys want the full recipe, you guys can go to my website again, and you guys can get it from there. And if you know how to make your own and those are your favorite, go ahead and go from there, right? So first thing I'm getting ready to do is I'm gonna take my cast iron, I'm gonna go ahead and put some fire underneath that because we gotta have some heat, right? First thing we are gonna do is, folks, we are gonna start browning our, you know, this is 80-20 ground beef. Now, let me go ahead and address this part. This is for like the people overseas and it's like true to being called, you know, it being called shepherd's pie. This is normally made, listen, it's normally made with ground lamb. But this is America, you know, we guys have to do, we have to do some type of substitution and ground beef is readily available. Finding ground lamb is like a, like a little bit of a chore. I can get it, but I gotta have it ground. They say it's froze and it's a three or four day process and blah, blah, blah. So ground beef works just fine. And check this out. If you guys have ever done, uh, listen to this, if you ever had meatloaf in your rotation, you got to love this because this is a breakdown of meatloaf when you think about it. Everything inside there. And that right there is what y'all saw me making in the very beginning. All right, so we got enough heat in this pan you can see, right? Look at that right there, starting to smoke. That's good enough for me. All right, so if you guys don't have one of these right here, look, this is my little meat masher. And these are especially good for those of you guys that are using those non-stick pans. They got that Teflon in them. You know what I mean? Uh, we gotta quit using them though, folks. But if you have those, you can use these in here. They won't let nothing, uh, you know, scrape or nothing like that. It'll protect it, and that way you won't ingest it. Now, I got it like that. That's good. Now I'm gonna give this just two generous pinches of salt. All right, so I'm just breaking it down. We want it to be small. We don't want no big chunks. You want to treat this like as if this was a chili. Now, okay, earlier I stated that I use 80-20, right? That gives me a little bit of, you know, fat to work with. If you guys pay attention, come here and look at this out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna move this around. You can see it right here. Now, for those of you guys that usually buy that 90-10, some of y'all even buy that 93-7, or whatever, you know, that means that it's a little bit on the lean side, right? So if you do that, now will be the time to add just a little bit more oil to it. You know what I mean? Any, you know, oil of your choice, right? Now, I'm getting ready to take my onions and we're gonna add those in, right? We're gonna continue cooking that. For me, I cook my beef till I don't see no more pink. And then I start, you know, I always give my onion the head start and I move this around. So now I'm gonna take my celery, add that. See that? And then we're gonna come with now, look, this was just a package of frozen veggies, you know what I mean? So you can see I got the medley, right? This would be my peas, my corn, and my carrot. I don't put it all in here like that. I like to just look at it and see how much is in there. So when you start mixing it up, you can see. If it needs more, you can go by it visually how it looks, you know what I mean? Because your eyes will tell you. What we're gonna do is just cook this just till it get a little soft, that's it. Okay, so after I got that in there and it's the heat, it's starting to defrost, you know, my veggies. Look, I got my, uh, this is my garlic cloves. I'm gonna set these here and I'm gonna bring my herbs and I'm gonna put these here because these are the next things that's gonna go in here. So I'm gonna grab my press, put these three garlic cloves in here. Take it like this. Look at this right here, folks. Man, that just amazes me every time. All right? And then our herbs. So look at this right here. Let me check my fire. I'm like on super low. I'm getting back to medium. You'll probably hear it kick up just a little bit more. But look at the color. That tell me my mixture is right. All right? So we leave that there. Now I'm getting ready to bring my tomato paste into the, you know, to infect. All right. Now once you got that, that paste, you know, mixed in, that heat to help it, you know, dissolve and spread, right? Look, now we want to take, check this out. We're going to take our flour. Right? You guys got it now. You've been cooking with me long enough to know when you start using flour, you know what I mean? You know that I'm the guy that like to do the rules. Or if I start adding cornstarch, we doing a little thickener, right? But just follow with me and stay with me, folks. Now we want to move this around. We want to let everything, you know, get nice and 
What's the word for me? Mixed and married. After you got everything cooked in and you, you feel like, I'm gonna say after about a couple of minutes of moving this around and letting that flour marinate with the food and it touching this, you know, cast iron, right? It's getting cooked. Now we're gonna come with our beef broth. We boiling, we finna set this down, lower this temp, set it down to a simmer. Right now we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes, right? We're gonna stay on top of it. What you wanna do is, you wanna keep yourself a little bit of your broth back or your stock back, right? Because if it get a little too dry, we wanna like stir it about every 15 minutes, right? So I'm gonna put my top over here, like that, and we cool. And for those of you guys that don't have a top for it, what you can do is get a piece of aluminum foil, put it over here, just leave one little vent. You know what I mean? We do it like that. That's old school, that's granny's way. But I don't have to do that right now, because if you look right here, this is part of my hex clad tops. You see that right there? It lets some of that evaporation, some of that heat and steam come out the top. After we come back, we're gonna preheat our oven to 375 degrees and we're gonna make something magical. Okay, so look, this is what we did. Just giving a recap. 30 minutes, I really didn't even have to go 30 minutes, you know what I mean? Because I like what I was seeing. It's nice and firm. I'll do it like this. We'll look at it like this, look at that. You see that right there? That's what you wanna have. Now I put my cheese right here so we can go ahead and discuss this. When you're making your mashed potatoes, you can put your cheese in here, you know what I mean? And you can leave it like that and then kind of like melt it that way, but I'm gonna do it a little different for, for me folks. Look, I almost reached down and grabbed it like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just put a light little layer of cheese on top of here. Now we're gonna come back to this right here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put the icing on the cake. <laughs> Y'all like that? Look, you know what? These last minute thoughts, right? We finna go ahead and do a little level up. 375, we go in the oven, put it right there, close them up. Now I'm getting ready to set myself a timer for about 20 minutes and we are gonna take a look. Usually it takes about 30 minutes, but 20 minutes I wanna know what's going on. So check it out folks, now you guys just see how easy it is and when you think, you should be able to come up with some of these recipes that I have and like combine them and make your own creations, right? It's really about making great tasting food. But as I always say, I'm not finna over talk it, it's time for me to get in here and get me something to eat. Here we go folks, there it is, cheers y'all. Mm. Woo! Now I don't let this cool, I'm still telling you it's fire, folks. Again, I just wanna recap that part about like, it's the, in the seasoning, you know, it's ground beef. Normally, I told you when they make it, it originally it's made with ground lamb. If you guys got the ground lamb, that's even better if you ask me. It's nice, tender, juicier, it holds on to the uh, to your seasoning and does all of that. But look, this is, I'm gonna say it like this, man. This is America, folks. You know what I mean? Hey, we get down and we doctor up everything and we make it just right, right? So with that being said, I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below, what else would you have put inside of this right here? Or if you got a better way of doing it, please talk to me in the comment section below. And don't forget, the full recipe is on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there, Listen, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. You guys don't know it if you're new to my channel, but listen, I love that great Kool-Aid. I'm about to grab me some of that, and guess what? We're about to sit down and eat. And you know what? I'm out. Peace.